Jeff, any regrets about the comments made uh, somewhat in jest about Michael Jordan? Uh, it seemed like he kind of took the uh, heat and lit up 51 points tonight. Any, any regrets? What's that now? I couldn't you hear regret you. saying some of the things about the course of the week about Michael Jordan? I didn't say anything this week about it. Well, you made some comments that, you know, sometimes people are in awe of Michael Jordan. Sometimes Michael Jordan kind of pretends to be friends with people, and then he seems to have big nights against people while they're smiling. No, I don't have any regrets. I told the truth. And he had a big night. He played a great game. That's the usual for him. He plays very well. He's a great player. At the same time, I, I believe everything I said. You have to go at him as hard as he goes at you. And he uses every weapon to his advantage that he can, some physical, some mental. I was proud of our guys. They went right at him. He had a great night, made some big shots. What did you say to him after that last basket? Some chores for him. <laughs> give us a clean version? No. He Michael, said, was he, he doing it the whole game? Him. Was he talking to you the whole game? I don't know. I didn't really listen. You know, it was, you know, I was pretty, pretty much focused coming into the game. And, you know, I just wanted to go out and play my game, and you know, hopefully we can find a way to win. You also seem to be having some fun with uh, your buddy Spike Lee at courtside, too. I don't know how you keep getting those good seats. You know, that's <laughs> a lot of people in Chicago should be sitting there. You know, uh, but uh, if you want to see it front up, uh, right up front, go ahead. Michael, Michael this reminds a lot of people in the old days when it used to do a lot of scoring and people did a lot of standing around. This is a playoff game. You know, this is kind of playoff atmosphere, and uh, we expected that, and um, you know, we were able to, to hold them off down the stretch, and you know, minus our, our big key rebound, I, mean, I think we did a heck of a job. Is that why you and Scotty went off in the first quarter and set the tone? The well, we had to. I mean, you, both of us are not accustomed to track, and, you know, we, we, we faced a, a tough opponent, and, uh, you know, we had to be a little bit more focused tonight, and uh, I think we did, both of us. Did you expect, did you, did you expect the extreme physical game uh, tonight from them? We expected that defensively, and, um, you know, we knew we had to get in there and physically just try to stand ground and, and rebound the ball, and, uh, you know, they were coming at us really, really strong. The result was the same, but how does this next team compare to the one from last year? This team is uh, it's getting better. I mean, you, you made some uh, some acquisitions in the summer, and it's going to take some time for them to blend together, but, you know, they look very strong. At least they played you know, well tonight and without Starks, who could have added a, a big factor for them uh, defensively, uh, just as offensively, and, uh, you know, we were lucky to win the game. Just so, you know, commented to, to, to Spike on the way into the locker room, uh, a message for his coach, the Knicks coach? I'm pretty sure you passed that on. <laughs> did you know you would have to step up your game tonight like you did? Uh, I just, I was ready, to, I was prepared to, to do whatever it took to win, you know, offense, defense, rebounding, whatever, and uh, so, so was Scott did. I mean, that's, that's what this team's always been about, and just wanted to find a way to win. Michael, getting the 50 point before the game, too, even at shoot around this morning, he was saying that guys like to be your friend, and they like to be friends on the court, and then you get to throw it out there in the game, and it's both. Have you heard that comment from him before, and what do you think of that? Uh, I think it was more geared to, to motivating his players. I mean, uh, you know, I've been competing against his players on this team now for five, six years. And uh, quite naturally, yeah, we, we've had some off-court friendships. I mean, but they've always played me well. I, I don't think you know, on the court they have befriended me by no means. And, uh, I don't go on the court expecting you know, to, to make friends. You know, uh, I go out there to play the game of basketball like I know how to play. When I leave the game, when I leave the court, I don't take, you know, what happened on the court away from the game, you know, and I respect everybody for a human being. And we only play a game, you know. Like he viewed it as, you know, maybe a war away from the game as well as on the court, and I don't view that. And you know, if he feels like you know, I take advantage of, of my friends, that's fine. You know, I, I did hear a comment about doing movies and inviting them. I didn't have anything to, Michael, does, to, to, Michael, to do with them does, doing does, the movie. Does, and, excuse you know, me, it's just, that's just the way it happened. So, so Michael, if you're thinking about right now at this stage of your career, does it mean anything different now to hit 50, hit 50 points now as opposed to the years gone by? Yes, if you win it, it means a lot. You know, when you put that extra effort out on the court, and, you know, by no means you want to put 50 points up on the board and then you lose. You know, so uh, it's great when you win. So, Michael, what you were thinking about what you said before what, the game, before the game started. I heard it. And, uh, it had some sense of extra motivation, but Which is you know, it didn't really, it didn't, it didn't go too deep, you know, because I'm, I'm a little bit bigger than that, and quite naturally, I didn't want his mind games to play with me. Is he like a young player, though, Michael? Where yeah, he's a young coach. I mean, it's a. Did he maybe pay his dues before he can start talking like that? Nah, that's not my my, my call, and uh, 
you know, if that's his way of motivating his players, he wants to take a page out of Pat Riley's book, you know, that's fine. I, I, I respect him as that, and I wish him the best. It's just that when it comes to Chicago, we, we view a different thing. Michael, Is there a level technical, technical that motivate like you, you at all? Do you want double? the ball every time? No, and I, I don't want to take everyone outside the offense. You know, I, I try to maintain a certain rhythm for everybody. And, you know, I still read the other players to see if, you know, they have a certain rhythm to play it. And if I get a, a good feeling about you know, them not really in sync with what, what's happening on the court, then you know, I don't have a problem taking more of an aggressive role in that, in that situation. But I ne by no means do I want to take everyone else out of, the, out of the, uh, uh, their, their offense. But does it still get to a point where you know you can't be stopped? Excuse me? I mean, does it get to a point where you just know you can't be stopped? Were you feeling it like that? I felt good offensively. I felt that I could get into situations where uh, you know, I can make something happen for myself or for the other team, and uh, they really wasn't double teaming me uh, that often uh, at all, really. And uh, you know, I felt really, really confident in that situation. Do you think it's time for the Knicks? Turnovers the last couple games. Yeah, we didn't start off the third quarter that game. I mean, um, yeah, we didn't deal with the pressure like we should have in in, uh, in, in similar situations, and uh, that's a learning uh, process right there. I think we have to. Learn to take care of the ball in those situations. I think we turned the ball over six straight times, and you know that gave them the motivation to get back into the game. And you know, we seem to have control. And you know, once we turn the ball over, I mean, that gives them incentive to get back in the game. Michael, you, you think it's time? You think it's time for the Knicks? Team that's going to test you guys down the stretch. That's what I feel. I mean, I think everybody's going to be contenders. But I mean, when we look at what's happening, I think they, they, you know, they're an older team and. Experience, you know, the playoffs deep into the playoffs and even in the finals. So I mean, you, know, you have to give them their, their upper hand. Michael, do you think it's time for the Knicks to change their strategy? It seems like they've they've always gone one on one, trying to play with one guy, and you've always gone off big on them, but the rest of the guys kind of get shut down. It hasn't worked for them. Well, I'm not here to give them suggestions or uh, be their coach. <laughs> I mean, uh, if that's the way they want to play. It. They have a certain scheme they want to stick to, then they do that. I mean, I'm not going to step out of place and say they should play a certain. Way. Do you love excelling more? And beating the Knicks more than any other team in the league. It's just that you know they're going to present you know the, the toughest challenge defensively as well as offensively. And I mean, uh, when you beat a team like the Knicks, you know you played a heck of a game to beat them. You know that's just how good they are, and uh, you can't underestimate that, and you can't take that for granted. You know, with their key players and their components and the nucleus of that team. You know, they can come out and play hard uh, no matter where they play. It's, it's, it's a rivalry just like that, and you have to be ready to play. When do you have your highest scoring game?